and growth worries weighing on investors as well as weaker than expected manufacturing data. Joining me right now is the assistant to the president for trade and manufacturing policy, Peter Navarro. Peter, it's always a pleasure to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Good morning, Maria. Well, you had big news yesterday with the World Trade Organization award uh, having to do with Airbus and the subsidies that were given to Airbus. Explain the award and how it impacts the U.S., Peter. Sure, a great victory for the Trump administration here. Basically, we have an uh, a, a aircraft manufacturer in Airbus that would not exist except for the fact of subsidies uh, from Europe. And it's been a 15 year battle. Uh, they've cost uh, this country thousands of jobs in Boeing, hundreds of aircrafts not sold. So the award here is moving forward at $7.5 billion a year in damages that were effectively allowed to recover. Uh, with tariffs. Now, I want to make a key point here. There's going to be no tit for tat retaliation. There should be no fears of that. I heard some chatter about that in the, in, uh, in the last hour. Uh, under the rules of the WTO, which we're complying with here, uh, we get to do this and they should not do anything back. This is all good for America and it's particularly going to help our agriculture sector. The point of the tariffs, Maria, um, is not just to recover these damages, uh, but more importantly, to force the European Union uh, to engage in fair and reciprocal trade with respect to their aircraft industry. So, you know, that's like the big picture. Uh, Donald Trump got this done in Trump time. I mean, this thing lagged for 15 years. Uh, Ambassador Lighthizer was the tip of his spear on this. Uh, he, very good lawyering, got it done, and it's, a, it was, it's, <laughs> it's the uh, biggest award in WTO history uh, by a factor of two. Yeah, no, no, you say there's going to be no, no uh, tit for tat, but what about the Can't impact? Be. What about the impact of just companies, right? So we already heard from Delta Airlines, and Delta Airlines is saying there's going to be a consequence as a result of this tariff on, on aerospace that. That ultimately, we're going to so, see airline prices go yeah. up, right? The, the, the price let's, of a trip to go up. So consumers let, ultimately will pay it, right? So let's talk a little bit about Delta Airlines. Um, Delta speaks with, with a forked tongue, and I know this from personal experience with Delta. On the one hand, Delta's been complaining ever since I've gotten in this administration about these unfair subsidized uh, Qatar and United Arab Emirates flights coming into the U.S., and the White House uh, has been uh, actively trying to help Delta in that. But Delta also, you, you, I don't know if you know this, Maria, every single plane in Delta's arsenal is an Airbus. They don't buy American. Right. right? That's, so that's on the right. One they avoided, hand, they avoided the, the, the Jetmax problem. They didn't have yeah, any well, of this, yeah, the, the that, Jetmaxes. That, but, but when they buy Airbus over the last 15 years that's heavily subsidized, it's an unfair advantage over American and United and others. So, I mean, Delta, what Delta needs to do is recognize uh, this is a buy American administration, make America great again. The bottom line here is we can't, I heard Dagan talk a little bit about this, acknowledging this, we can't let Airbus heavily be, be heavily subsidized and take jobs away yeah. and this is you know we went through we played by the rules yeah. of the WTO we got a great result because of the president and uh, we're, we're going to try the, the goal here Maria make no mistake about it the goal here is to get Europe to play fair. Yeah, That's but, but what if the they goal. don't, Peter? I mean, look, let, let's go through it well, now. Then the because the US, stay in place. the U.S. is going to set uh, to impose tariffs on $7.5 billion in goods from the EU after this uh, sure. WTO uh, ruling. Sure. Uh, President Trump tweeted about it this morning. He said this, the U.S. won a $7.5 billion award from the World Trade Organization against the European Union, who has for many years treated the USA very badly on trade due to tariffs, trade barriers, and more. This case going on for years, a nice victory. But Peter, is oh, this true. The opening up of the door to further tariffs on European goods. No, because the no, president no, 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 even no, no, told no. me in a, 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 in a couple of interviews, actually, yeah. that the Europeans yeah. treat us even worse than China and that Europe is next in terms of tariffs. So now we're seeing tariffs on what? Things like French wine, dairy, cheeses, stuff like that. Is this the opening to, for the president to actually continue <laughs> ramping up tariffs on Europe? So, so look, uh, this was a case 15 years in the making. President Trump got it to the finish line in Trump time. Uh, all that's going to happen here is our domestic producers uh, are going to produce more, and that's good for America. We'll have a lower trade deficit with Europe as a result of this. I'm not. I'm puzzled why we can't just take this victory for what it is. I mean, this was a case at the WTO. I don't know why okay. uh, there's a slippery slope argument here. There's going to be no retaliation by Europe, 
and it's all good for American producers. And and look, uh, this is the kind of day where President Trump and Ambassador Lighthizer should be getting uh, high fives and, and salutes. Uh, they did a great job. Why why are you so adamant in saying that there will be no European retaliation, Peter? What, what do you what sure, can you point us to say to yes to underline sure. that that there won't sure. be a retaliation? Let's work through this. Uh, this was a case that was filed with the World Trade Organization. Uh, it went through 15 years of litigation, and there was a judgment. Under the rules of the WTO, okay. the judgment will be enforced, and there can be no. Uh, so this is simply uh, the judgment. For period. Tat. Yeah. I mean, if, end of if, story. If, okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, end of story, really. And 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 the tit for tat argument um, really is just going to be used by people who want to stir things up. It's just it won't happen. So the ta it. the tariff situation and the uncertainty around China and USMCA, by the way, is clearly rattling uh, some investors. The president is blaming the market losses that we've been seeing on the impeachment inquiry. He tweeted this yesterday, Peter. All of this impeachment nonsense, which is going nowhere, is driving the stock market and your 401ks down. But that is exactly what the Democrats want to do. They're willing to hurt the country with only the 2020 election in mind. Isn't it fair to say also, though, Peter, that this is partly due to the uncertainty around trade, given the fact that you've got the ISM index where it is? Earlier, we saw that the factory activity is now in contraction mode. And and the trading uh, situation globally uh, is directly linked to that? So let me, let me say a couple of things about this. First of all, to quote Corey Lewandowski, I think there's a lot of Democrats, including Adam Schiff, who hate this president more than they love this country. Mm -hmm. And Schiff in particular, um, this man appears to be a sociopath. I mean, he just he lied for years about having evidence in the, in the Russia hoax had none. He lied uh, multiple times about not having contact with this alleged whistleblower. Uh, it, I mean, this, this guy will do anything uh, that he yeah, no, can, basically, that. to yeah, overthrow this government. Yeah, and we've been saying that this morning, Peter. Right? We've been saying that so, this morning. So, so in terms of how that works with the markets, I mean, if <laughs> the prob as the probability of impeachment might go up, right, you lose Donald Trump, uh, you lose tax cuts, deregulation, cheap energy, trade reforms, you lose all of the policies that have made this economy great over the last three years. So I think it's a legitimate point uh, that the president has to say that this impeachment process is indeed destabilizing the market. My own view is that the other big thing that's really hurting us, Maria, and we've talked a lot about this, um, is the currency effects of a bad Federal Reserve policy by Fed Chairman Jay Powell. Uh, most of the growth we've lost has been export related because the dollar is simply uh, overvalued. Now, I got some good news here. Um, the ISM Manufacturing Index, I've, I've written about that in, in like three different books. I love that as a measure uh, in principle. But uh, there's another version of that by a, a firm called Market, and it's spelled I T, not E T. Yeah, at no, the end. I know. Market, I looked at yeah. that. Uh, look at that one. It's very interesting. It's higher. Uh, I think it's above 50 for the U.S. And the difference between the ISM and the market one is that the ISM appears to be skewed towards these multinational uh, companies and doesn't really reflect the strength of domestic manufacturing here. I'm bullish on this economy. We have a very strong uh, consumer sector. Yeah. Uh, we, we have policies in place which are driving this economy. Uh, this instability that the impeachment process is causing is, mm. not, is not helpful at all. I, mean, yeah. It's not, yeah, no, I think I, the I Democrats might love a recession to beat Donald Trump. It, but my gosh, I mean, where are we going in this country when we use impeachment? process to overthrow a duly elected president. Yeah. It's just wrong. The, un the uncertainty about trade, I mean, I feel like even though we've seen these two days where the market was down better than 800 points, we're still very close to all-time highs. So, you know, you, ha you have to call that a victory. And, and, and all-time lows in the... All-time right. lows in the unemployment That's rate. That's right. 51-year lows yeah. in, in terms so, of unemployment. So why are we but wringing at some our hands? Point, but at some point, Peter, markets yeah. will start to notice that the uncertainty is continuing. I mean, are you expecting USMCA to come to the floor this fall before October and uh, before the October elections in Canada yeah. or before Thanksgiving? If it doesn't come by, by Thanksgiving, you know it's not coming, uh, number one. So, uh, and in I, terms I, of China, yeah. I mean, at some point, don't we need to have a little more detail in terms of where we are to, to quiet down markets? 
So USMCA, uh, hundreds of thousands of jobs, a point of GDP growth, good for farmers, ranchers, manufacturers. Uh, Maria, I, I, don't wait till Thanksgiving. I think uh, it's got to get to the floor of the House this month. This is the hunt for USMCA October. Uh, if we don't get it this month, I don't think we're going to get it. And uh, I, you know, it would be, a, it'd be tragic uh, for this country, and it would be a catastrophe economically. And I just, I don't know if that democratically controlled House now is capable of doing the right thing, watching what they're doing here. Um, re with respect to the China issue and this whole issue of uncertainty, look, I think there's a lot of certainty right now among uh, corporations around the world. They want out of China, whether there's a deal or not. I mean, you look at the environment in China, I don't think they're going to be making a lot of stuff in China anymore. Right. Uh, the, the wages are going up. The pollution's out of control. Yeah. They're doing these corporate credit scores that put you behind j bars. So yeah. let's have a good negotiation, though, this week and, and, and move forward. We'll be watching. Peter, good to see you. Thanks Bullish. so much. Peter Navarro joining us in Washington. We'll be right back.